The collapse of the deal between Enron and Dynegy has left Enron employees stunned. Many of them wondering if they'll be getting their next paycheck. Everybody's concerned about their job. As it is right now, I think everybody's a little in shock. People don't know if they get their paychecks on Friday. Enron employees, some carrying boxes filled with belongings, leave their downtown headquarters, huddled against the cold and an uncertain future. News of the demise of the merger between Enron and Dynegy left many in shock. People are surprised, they're shocked at the way that things went from here to there so quickly. Enron accountant David Bacconi says, like thousands of other employees, he's just wondering what will happen next and how he'll support his family if he loses his job. I have a wife and two kids and, and uh, that's always a concern, you know, where, where we're going to, what we're going to do. Especially because many workers are losing not only their jobs, but also their retirements, as Enron's stock keeps plunging. Yeah, I think that many, many people have lost a substantial amount of money. According to Bacconi, this news hits even harder because Enron had such bright prospects and such talented workers, workers that invested their faith in Enron's future. Unlike a lot of other companies, I mean, the, the employees here had a lot of faith in Enron. I mean, definitely, we are... Uh, there was a constant drive to always make things better here, to, to, to be a front runner. This was supposed to be a very solid company. No worries about your future, right? If you come from a small dot com startup, you go to Enron to have a safe uh, uh, future. But that's, <laughs> that's no longer there. Despite that, not all employees are bitter. Enron. I don't know whether to say was or is a great company. But. but some Enron employees say they are still hopeful that both their company and their jobs can be salvaged somehow. In downtown Houston, Suzanne Bose, News to Houston. The House Financial Services Committee will begin the first congressional hearings on the Enron debacle tomorrow morning, but they'll be doing it without much help from Enron. Late today, the company announced that neither CEO Ken Lay or any other company representative will be here to answer questions. There were very sophisticated people taking advantage of employees' money in their savings plan. Congress wants to know what caused the Enron meltdown, wants to know why employee retirement funds were wiped out, while at the same time top executives were personally making millions. It is really the, the most stunning example of, of corporate misbehavior I think I have ever seen. Committee members will be focusing on what they describe as the company's overstated earnings, mishandling of the 401k plan, possible securities fraud, and accounting irregularities. I have grave concerns that there were actions taken that were not only inappropriate, but perhaps fraudulent, for which there should be criminal consequences. The House Financial Services Committee is just one congressional panel investigating Enron. The Energy and Commerce Committee has already sent investigators to Houston to interview Enron executives. Today, the committee asked Enron CEO Ken Lay to turn over thousands of documents. Early next year, the committee will begin holding its own hearings. We want to hold their feet to the fire, and if there is some criminal activity, then obviously I want the Justice Department, who is investigating the Department of Labor, do their job. Representative Richard Baker says if Enron executives continue to refuse to answer the committee's questions voluntarily, early next year, he'll begin sending out subpoenas for them. In Washington, Phil Archer, News to Houston.